Hi, welcome to CI Alpha Plus 2, introduction to the radio, to the parts you need for our uh, per end, and we'll walk you through each individual item, how it goes together, and this should give you everything you need to know to get rolling with the CI Alpha Plus 2. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just walk through the different parts. So every, every site will have a different set of radios. Uh, the Alpha Plus 2 radio ships like this. You'll notice um, it's open wide in the middle. This is um, Radio 1 and Radio 2. This is a dual radio, dual core uh, radio. It's got four ports, two of them SFP, two of them copper. We've got a management port, a 48 volt DC port. Uh, this is manageable via serial, via Ethernet, and uh, we'll walk you through how that all goes together. We also have an antenna branching unit. We will be installing this into the radio, into that uh, location on the radio. This is an OMT interface. It's round. It's going to be a little bit different size if you've got an 11 gig, an 18, or a 23. This is the 11 gig component. That's how it ships. We have an antenna mounting bracket. We've got a couple of cables, different types of cables. This is the 3622. This provides you with a serial connection to the radio. This is the 3616. This provides you an Ethernet connection as well as power uh, feeds for, your, for pathing the actual radio. We have a grounding kit. This is the 42025. This is radio grounding kit. It's got the lugs, the ground cable. We have an RJ45 surge protection. So this is just a little, um, just to, to protect the actual RJ45. So it's just very simple, mounted in, grounded. Uh, it provides protection. You'll have one of those per end. This is our DC power feed, if you should need it. Again, uh, this connects directly to the radio. It's stub-ended so that we can actually connect it to uh, power cable that's run up the tower. And last but not least, this is our uh, connector. This is called a P20101. It's actually, we call it the Rosenberger connector. Well, actually, they call it the Rosenberger connector. And this is a connector that we use for all types of connections to the radios. Uh, you see it's basically just three parts. Whether it's copper, whether it's fiber, uh, we use the same connector. So we're going to actually walk through the, the basic uh, components on this radio and then how to kind of take it to the next step of actually starting the install. So again, as I mentioned before, the Alpha Plus 2 is a four port uh, dual core radio uh, that's got the ability to support, depending on your uh, throughput, uh, your modulation, your channel bandwidth, up to two gig worth of, of capacity. So on the back side, and we'll see if we can get this uh, correct, um, we have ports labeled here. You have one, two, three, four. This is management. This is 48 volt. This is where the ground lug connects. Uh, you see we do have a couple of LEDs here. Ultimately, that when we power up, we'll be able to see these. Uh, for sprint installations, we're primarily going to be using port 3. It's a copper Ethernet port. We'll be PoE powering these radios primarily. So um, for right now, I'm just going to connect all of I'm just going to open up that port so you can see. Okay. So you can see in here, it's an Ethernet port. Uh, these are SFP ports. You can see the slot for the SFP. If we're doing a, a, an actual fiber uh, install, that's what we'll be using. But for right now, this is just going to be copper. Okay. You can see these are weatherproofed caps. They're kind of a pain to get on there. Um, but once they're on, uh, they seal it perfectly for weather. So uh, 
Those are my Ethernet ports. Again, LAN 3, port 3 is the one we're going to be using for standard uh, sprint deployments. And again, the management port 48 volt. So uh, you'll see that it's actually uh, the OMT is a circular interface. This is different than the hybrid, which is an oblong or rectangular interface. We also have another interface that actually provides dual waveguide connectors. This is what Sprint is going to be using 90% of the time. Well, actually, the, the CI part number is labeled right here. On your BOM, you should have a part number that is associated with that or an IMN number. Okay, now you'll notice this actually can only fit one way. If I try to put it in that way, I actually am, am not able to actually insert it correctly. So it's uh, made for protection. Um, we have a rubber grommet on the inside. And when we actually screw these in, uh, uh, we want to use a um, balanced approach. So in other words, we want to make sure that it sets down nice and flat. Okay, so what the, uh, there is in the, in the manual a recommended uh, procedure for which ones you do first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Uh, these are seven millimeter bolts, so you'll need a seven millimeter uh, socket or, or nut driver. Okay, and I'm not going to do them all, but you can basically see what we're doing here. Okay, so I, I happen to have a nut driver here, so literally we just sink these down, kind of, kind of round robin-ish. Similar to if you were doing your lugs on, a, on your car. Okay. Again, there is an actual order in the manual. Okay. Literally, that's it. There's eight, eight screws or eight bolts and washers. Apply them all. Cinch it down. There is a torque setting in the manual. Please use that. You want this. This is obviously, if this leaks, uh, we're going to have problems with performance of the, of the radio. Okay, so that's basically the first piece is we're putting in this uh, component that actually mates with the antenna. Now the second thing we actually have to do is put on the antenna mounting bracket. Uh, it's a very straightforward component. Four bolts. These are 10 millimeter bolts. And again, there is torque settings in the radio, in the manual. Okay, I'm not going to torque these down. Okay, so the OMT, the antenna branching unit inserted, sink uh, cinched down, the antenna mounting bracket installed. At this point, it's basically ready to go up on the actual up on the tower. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually power up the radio. So depending on what power source you have available to you, uh, it's highly recommended that we do this, uh, that we basically do the staging of the radio before you go out to the field. So you can install all of this componentry, put it back in the box with the bracket attached, the OMT attached, it's ready to go. Uh, so for this, we would use the 36 22 component and this also provides me a serial connection so it's uh, it is a keyed interface this is a military a mil spec uh, inter, uh, connector it's called an M12 and so what we're going to do is we're going to just screw that on and that actually provides connection to the actual both DC power to the radio as well as serial connection okay and it don't force it. It's very simple. Once it's actually uh, set up on the key, it's actually very easy to, to screw in. Okay, so basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this white cable. This is my DC power feed and I'm going to take this over to my uh, DC power rectifier. Okay. 
So once we apply power to the radio, we'll actually see. So we know we've got power, and basically at this point, the radio is booting up. So to connect to it via serial connection, you're going to need a couple things. First is, you've got this cable, again the 3622, and if you've got a standard laptop, you're going to need something like this, which is a USB to serial connector. This goes in my USB port. Alright, and at this point, I should be ready to actually start uh, running the radio. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through the steps needed to actually connect your laptop to the radio via serial. You need to have some kind of application that uh, supports serial connection. I'm using PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y. I need to determine where on my laptop the serial port is connected. And so I go to Device Manager. I can see here that I'm actually port 3, COM 3. So you go open up Device Manager, go to your COM and LPT ports. Now I'm going to do is, in PuTTY, I'm going to change that from COM1 to COM3. I'm going to change the speed from 9600 to 115200. Uh, that's the settings that you need for the CI Alpha Plus 2 radios. And then I'm going to change the serial connection uh, parameters uh, by clicking on that and going to, uh, so it's uh, 115200, 8199. Once I've set, got that set correctly, and if I'm connected to the serial connection, you'll actually see the radio spooling all sorts of information, uh, again, via the serial connection, so I can tell what's going on in the radio. This is only available with the serial radio, and so it's something that can be beneficial, especially if you're trying to figure out if there's an issue during boot up. Uh, but I like to use the serial connection, but again, not everybody has this available to them, so... Uh, that's why we're just showing you what it looks like here. Okay, uh, we're going to show the alternative method for connecting and powering up the radio. So again, I've got everything installed correctly. Now, I've left the DC and serial connector uh, attached. So you can see, uh, I actually, it's a different port that we're actually going to be using for the Ethernet connection. Okay, so this is again serial and DC power, so I don't have a power source like that. I don't need this cable. It's a great cable to have in case you do have DC power. Okay, so going forward, what we're going to do is we're actually going to power this radio up via PoE. Okay, so for PoE to work, I need a, a PoE unit. This is an indoor AC PoE. Uh, generates 56, uh, 56 watts. That's sufficient to power our, the CI Alpha Plus radios. I need the Ethernet connection. And by default, port 3 and port 4 are actually set up to support PoE. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that in. So at this point, it's booting. So again, I'm powering the radio using PoE. Okay, and for this to work, I've got to know, I'm going to have to tell that to the radio, and I need to know what the radio IP address is. By default, these radios, 172.20.255.15, that's for the high radio, or 172.20.254.14, that's for the low radio. So, to determine what type of radio you have, you can look right on the actual radio itself, and it tells you here, this is a uh, Alpha Plus 2, and it's a 3 high. This, uh, the subband is 38. So we know this is a high radio, so the IP address for this is 172.20.255.15. Okay? So to be able to do that, I also need to be able to actually log in to the radio, opening a telnet session. Now it takes a few minutes for the, ra for the radio to boot, and we're going to uh, wait a couple of minutes and then we'll telnet in and walk you through the basics of it. Okay, so we've got our 
laptop connected via Ethernet to the radio, but I need to change my adapter settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up my network connections, go to the Ethernet, and change the adapter options. So up in the right-hand corner, okay, and I'm going to look for my LAN connection. This is unidentified, and we're going to go and change properties. Go down to properties, we want to go for the IPv4. Change properties there, and at this point I enter in the appropriate IP address. It needs to be on the same subnet as the actual radio, so I'm going to enter in 172.20.255.100. And hit OK. And close. You don't really have to close it, but at this point we're going to go ahead and validate that we can talk to it. So I'm going to open up a command window that's CMD, and I'm going to ping the IP address of the radio, so 172.20.255.15. Hit enter, and there I'm talking to the radio, so I know I can establish a Telnet session to it at this point. Okay, so we pinged the radio. We know we can talk to it via IP. Now we're going to open up and Telnet to... Uh, the radio. So I'm going to use the Microsoft Telnet client. Uh, for some reason, Putty was not being captured by my screen capture software, so I actually enabled Telnet in my Microsoft um, attributes, Windows attributes. And so here I'm opening 172.20.255.15, and we can validate that we are indeed talking to the radio. Really, any Telnet client will work. Uh, you might use Secure CRT, you might use Putty, you might use something else. Uh, and here, here we're actually using the Windows Telnet client. So that's basically everything you need to know to talk to the radio, establish connection. And at this point, you're ready to start with the method of procedure for configuring the radio for the site-specific details. Thanks very much, and have a great day.